little matter. It will be starting soon. Oh, oh, oh. story time with Mr. Lamada. Where all your dreams come true. Oh, oh, oh. it brings to life your favorite stories with a great big smile. You won't leave lonely. Won't you start? All the reading, I just can't wait to be hearing Story time with Mr. Lamada He will be starting soon Oh, Story time with Mr. Lamada Where all your dreams come true Oh, he brings to life your favorite stories with a great big smile. You won't leave lonely, won't you start all the reading? I just can't wait to be here. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Storytime. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, happy Wednesday. We've mentioned that she's coming to Storytime, and uh, we've been excited about the books. Well, Deborah Hopkinson is here with us this morning and will be joining us very shortly. But thank you for being here with us on Storytime, and thank you, too, for adjusting. I know with the last few weeks, with us changing our time, 6 o'clock to 7, and we're back here. But most of the times when we have guests, we will be on at 7. So thank you so much for making those adjustments. Thank you for being here with us on Storytime. We appreciate you, and, of course, we appreciate the time that we spend together. I hope that it is a good day wherever you are today, and I hope hope that um, if it's starting off just like mine, if it's your if morning where you are, well, I hope that you have a wonderful rest of the day. But before that, of course, we have a story to read together, conversation to get into together, and of course, some girl power to celebrate today. So thank you so much for being here with us on Storytime. And of course, as always, let us know who is joining in with you and uh, if anybody's joining in with you, but also you're welcome. Even if you're joining in alone, you're still welcome here to this wonderful community that we we have here at Storytime. Thank you so much for joining in. And of course, if it is later in the day where you are, well, I hope you've had a wonderful day and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for being here with us on Storytime. A beautiful book, a powerful book, and of course, an amazing guest that we have here on Storytime. And we'll be reading our Cinderella and a Mouse Code Fred. I love that one, and I hope that you do too. I'm sure you will. And remember, too, once we go through these books, please find them at your local library. Find them where we find books. So thank you so much for being here. And, of course, our guest, Deborah Hopkinson, is, is here already and will be here on set with us very shortly. Thank you so much for joining in. And remember, too, if you miss Storytime, you miss these conversations, you can always catch us at storytimewithmrlimada.com. You can catch us at Storytime with Mr. Limada on Facebook and YouTube right here. So thank you so much for being here. And remember to keep sending us your recommendations. Send them to Storytime because we want stories that represent everybody. We want stories that everybody enjoys. And of course, I may know a story that you don't. And by bringing them together, yes, we spread that beautiful, beautiful uh, reading material out there. Thank you so much for being here with us on Storytime, a wonderful lineup that we have this week. I hope that you've enjoyed the ones that we've read so far. Remember on Monday, we had the Red Tin Box. Wasn't that a sweet story? Beautiful book. And then yesterday, of course, we read about Cecilia Payne, the story of Cecilia Payne, and we were looking at the fire of stars. And today we're here with Cinderella and a mouse called Fred, and of course, Deborah Hopkinson. And then two more after that. So look out for that. Join us in the week for all those amazing books. Thank you so much for being here with us on Storytime. Very quickly, let us see who is with us this morning, ready to enjoy a wonderful story. Thank you so much for being here with us on Storytime. Good morning to you. Ari and Megan joining us out there in Kentucky. Thank you for being here. And of course, everybody that is joining in later on too, well, sending you lots of hugs. Thank you for being here with us on Storytime. What's happening in Kentucky today? We have Grammy on the phone. 
And Ari is finishing his morning worksheets. Well, thank you for being here. And we're glad that we can be a soundtrack to that work that is happening this morning. Thank you for being here. He's about to complete his third chapter in his Brain Quest workbook. Oh, my goodness. Ari, hard at work this morning. We hope that you can join us and enjoy story time for sure once you're done. Thank you so much for being here with us. And we appreciate you sending you lots of love out there in Kentucky. And I hope that it has remained cool as it has been getting cooler this um this week thank you so much for being here with us on story time but without much ado it is time to introduce our guest here to story time welcome deborah hopkinson <laughs> good morning everyone from all over <laughs> thank you so much how are you doing today i'm wonderful i am in near Portland, Oregon, and uh, it's still warm here, oh, no. um, but I have huge sunflowers and I'm growing something special in my garden that maybe we can talk about later. Oh, yes, please, please. Yeah, we would love that. And uh, we, we do too here on Storytime, as you can see, for, for, for example, the picture in the background and um, Ari too. Most people have sent in different pictures. So if you have a photo and you'd like us to use it as a background one of these days, please send us one. Just send and say, hey, I took this picture and um, we can get to admire the beauty of where you are. <laughs> but well, today, I can't oh, wait sorry. to hear you read the story because I think you're probably a better reader than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, um, I, I don't know about that, but thank you for your kind words. <laughs> but Deborah, too, you know, like before we get into the reading, just thinking, um, you know, what inspires you? What inspired you? Who inspired you? Because I'm thinking like we have so many kids here that join in. And actually, Ari came in one time and read from um, his book, this one, The Cat Adventures, um, the, the Cat's Adventure. And it was uh, it was fun having him through and seeing his creativity and author illustrating this book. So just wondering for you, is like, how does a kid from um, Laurel, Massachusetts, right, move to the Deborah Hopkins now? Well, I, Hopkins like then. Ari and my grandson, Oliver, who is just seven and working on a, a series of books himself, um, about a cat, actually. Um, I wanted to write when I was little. And one way I prepared was just reading lots of books. And I didn't become a full-time writer right away. In fact, in fact, it took me like most of my life but I wrote during my job. I wrote for, for things at work. And the more I wrote, no matter what it was, that gave me a little confidence to at least try to write stories. Hmm. So I began writing stories when my daughter, who's now a teacher, um, was only three years old. And it took me five years to sell my first story. First story. And what was that one? It was called Sweet Clara and the Freedom Quilt. And it was, um, I always tell kids at author visits, when you're looking for stories, you can be like a little um, a little insect with their antenna up. And I heard, I got the idea for that story by listening to the radio one morning. Oh. So whatever you see, whatever happens to you, um, things you read um, or Anything that you might come across in your life it can be a way for an idea for a story that can take root. Yeah, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, no, it's um, and um, over the years, you know, like uh, how much, how much did how much, how much did um, uh, your daughter play a part in you deciding to well with publishing books. Rebecca and I have a son named Dimitri both have helped me with my work um, and Rebecca especially um, uh, a book I have coming out in a few weeks is called The Plot to Kill a Queen yeah. and it's set like in three acts like the theater it's about the theater and so from the time she was little Rebecca loved theater and so that book is dedicated to her. And she also wow. played softball. I think you play sports yourself. <laughs> yeah. And so I wrote a book called Girl Wonder about a girl pitcher. So um, people in your life can help you with story ideas. And I also always remind kids to interview their older relatives or friends mm. or neighbors 
because some of my books are about that include they include oral histories of people that lived in the past or went through experiences. And um, if we don't capture their stories, they can disappear. Yeah, no, that's so true. That is so true. I mean, you bring that up and I just remember the conversations that I had with my grandmother. And I, I, I think I've said this before. I only got to really meet one of my grandparents. The other one I met, but I was still way too young. I think I was like one or two. And so I don't really remember. But there's one that was there all the way through into into pretty much into my adulthood. So, but yeah, we had lots of great conversations and just the amount of things I picked up or just learning about my grandfather from her. That's right. Since I never got to meet him, but just hearing all these stories and um, yeah, and just uh, sometimes realizing, oh my goodness, that is I'm so similar, even though to him <laughs> I never met him. <laughs> But yeah, no, thank you for sharing that. And also joining us out in Lusaka, Zambia today. Thank you so much for joining in. So Neil and Gwenya, how are you doing? Good to see you here on Storytime. And of course, sending love to you and the family out there. Hopefully not too hot yet uh, in Zambia, as we know the hot season is coming right up. Thank you so much for being here with us on Storytime. Well, we're going to get into the book, read, and then we'll be back for more conversation after that. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining in, friends. And um, catch me on the other side of this short break when we're back for more story time and, of course, our reading for today. So we'll be right back. Thank you for being here with us on Story Time. <laughs> You're watching Story Time with Maple and Cypress. Just kidding. You're <gasps> watching Story Time with Mr. Lamada. <laughs> love it, Ari. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much for joining in story time today. All right. So we're going to bring up our book and begin to read. And today we have a special one, Cinderella. And let me just change to the background so we make sure that we can see our book clearly. All right. Here we go. Yay. I'm excited for this one. I hope you are too. There we go. And let me see if I can just change that to there. There we go. And we have our book for today. And this one is called Cinderella and a Mouse Called Fred. Oh, I'm excited for this one. It is written by our guest today, Deborah Hopkinson. And this name Hopkinson, I have to say too, catches me all the time because I want to stop at Hopkins, but it is Hopkinson. And uh, illustrations by Paul O. Zelensky. Um, and also, again, the way Paul and O is written, I want to say Paolo, but no, Paul O. Zelensky. And um, yeah, I'm excited for this one. Here we go. <laughs> Cinderella and a Mouse Called Fred. And remember, too, that we're reading this book with permission of uh, Anne Schwartz books. Um, and big thank you, an imprint of Penguin Random House. Thank you so much for allowing us to read this book here on Storytime. And of course, we have Deborah with us as our guest. All right, here we go. Once upon a time, there was a small gray mouse who lived in a pumpkin patch. It was a quiet life until the night a stranger appeared. Where's the moon when I need it? She grumbled. I will never find a pumpkin for Cinderella. Cinderella, the mouse ears shot up. Why, why he knew Cinderella or Ella as her friends called her. She had surprised him one day. She had surprised him one day as he sat scratching his ears behind an especially plump pumpkin. Ella had been carrying a shovel, but she hadn't tried to squash him. Instead, she smiled and said, Hello, little friend. What kind and curious eyes you have. You look like a Fred. <laughs> Such a dis. Distinguished name. I like it. The mouse decided. He had shot her a glance that he hoped was kind, curious, and fabulously Freddyish. <laughs> Thanks for keeping. Oh, let me see if I can get closer to that. 
Thanks for keeping watch over my pumpkin, Brad. I plan to win a prize with it. So no nibbling, please. Ella had said, then Ella had said, then added, and better not come near the house. My wicked stepmother and stepsisters don't like mice or me either, even though I do all the chores. Plus, there is a cat. Oh, watch out for that, Fred, for sure. Fred had been sorry to hear this nice human had to put up with such a mean family to say nothing of a cat. <laughs> Now he asked the stranger, who seemed able to converse quite easily in Rodent, why do you want a pumpkin for Ella? Because I am her fairy godmother, obviously, she said in a huff. So is there a pumpkin in this tangled mess or not? Temper, temper, Fred thought. He wondered if all fairy godmothers were grouchy. <laughs> but since he was indeed kind, all he said was, there is a nice one right here. And the fairy godmother picked the pumpkin just like that. Fred winced. It would never win a prize now. <laughs> then she turned to him. I guess you would do, Mouse, she said, and, trapped, and tapped him with her wand. <gasps> What was about to happen? Whoa! Suddenly, Fred felt himself tumbling about like a little lost leaf in a storm. The next thing he knew, he had a long silver, long silver mane and four ginormous hooves. Oh my goodness, that is quite the transformation. <laughs> Goodness, he was attached to some sort of gaudy orange contraption. And there was Ella, all dressed up and fancy. No time to get a, a coachman, dear, the fairy godmother was saying. You will have to drive. It's all good, said Ella. But as she was climbing up, she stumbled. Seriously, glass high heels? <laughs> be home before the last stroke of midnight or your, or your stead and coach will turn back into that scrawny little mouse and the pumpkin, the fairy godmother warned. And your gown will become your sooty old Cinderella rags again. Oh, have a heart. Let her keep the dress, Fred tried to squeak. It's, uh, it came out like a neigh. <laughs> the fairy godmother gave him a rude smack on, on his flank. Walk on! <laughs> and off they went, just like that, in the fairy tale. Just like in the fairy tale. Fred wasn't sure how he felt about being a horse. His ears still itched terribly. And so far as he and so far as he could figure, there was no way to get a, a hoof anywhere near them. When they arrived at the palace, Ella clambered down and scratched Fred's ears. Ah, relief. You have kind and curious eyes, she told him. I bet you're Fred, the mouse who keeps watch over my best pumpkin. No. <laughs> Fred supposed horses were used to standing around. But whoa, talk about boring. He tried amusing himself by humming along with the music drifting out of the palace. Some of the... And he made up a little dance to... <laughs> it occurred to Fred that if he was still a mouse, he could have scored a ringside seat to the entire extravaganza, including the cheese platters. Oh my goodness, that sounds delicious. <laughs> Instead, he had to imagine Ella twirling the prince, whoever that was. <laughs> I 
At last, Ella appeared, hobbling back in only one glass slipper. After a few hobbles, she yanked it off and threw it against the lamppost. Just looking at the shards made Fred's hooves hurt. Oh. What a disaster, Ella cried as she climbed into the coach. My feet are killing me, and that so-called prince, when I told him I loved to garden, he sniffed and said, I abhor dirt. Bummer, Fred thought. He wondered if there was a way to give the fairy godmother a one-star rating. <laughs> Ella flicked the reins. Home, Fred! And off he trotted. <laughs> That's what hooves sound like in my head. Hooves on the, on the ground. <laughs> Watch out, Auntie M. He neighed. Run for your lives, cousins. Just as Fred was about to trample baby Wilhelm. Oh, I'll go back to one paragraph. I'm sorry. When Fred heard the first chime of the town clock strike midnight, he broke into a gallop. But wait, what were those tiny scaring things, a family of mice, and even worse, Fred recognized them. Watch out, Auntie M, he neighed. Run for your lives, cousins. Just as Fred was about to trample baby Wilhelm, doom, 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 something happened. What is it? The clock chimed the last stroke of 12. Again, Fred was tumbled about in that ghastly manner. When he opened his eyes, his ears itched. He scratched them with his mouse paw. Ah. Once Wilhelm had scampered safely away, Fred spun around to check on Ella. She was picking up pieces of smashed pumpkin and sticking seeds into her, pro into her pocket. That was unusual, she said. She gave Fred a seed to nibble, then tucked him into, tucked him into her other pocket and set off for home. <laughs> I want to be in a pocket. Sounds cozy. <laughs> The next morning, Ella and Fred watched the royal coach arrive. Ella's stepmother and stepsisters bustled out to greet the prince. He appeared to be looking for the owner of the glass slipper he held. I can't wait to see, to see this, Ella said. <laughs> well, you can guess what happened next. The first stepsister couldn't get her big toe in. The second couldn't get her little toe in. They bickered. They berated the slipper. The stepmother yowled. The cat joined in. The prince's face scrunched up. Finally, Fred simply had to cover his ears. Oh, my. <laughs> As the coach rode past them, Ella hid behind some Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I would say he is, I would say he's in for a wild goose chase, she remarked, then laughed. I will find my own destiny, thank you very much. <laughs> I guess that's that, thought Fred. <laughs> but as it turned out, it was just the beginning. The next spring, Ella planted the pumpkin seeds she'd saved. One grew into a spectacular pumpkin like nothing anyone had ever seen. What shall we call it? She asked Fred one day. He secretly hoped Ella would name it after him, the Fred Pumpkin. <laughs> and well, she might have, but fate intervened. How? <laughs> That fall, 
Ella and her pumpkin worn a blue ribbon at the fair. They beat out a young farmer who fell madly in love with Ella, just as she was. And Ella loved her right back. Aww. <laughs> Ella and the farmer got married and moved to a small farm where Fred kept careful watch over their magical, magnificent pumpkins. It was a fairy tale ending after all. <laughs> Aww. And that, dear reader, is the story of how fairy tale pumpkins got their name. Oh my goodness. And I won't read the back matter just now though they're about fairy tale pumpkins. And I hope that when you get this book at your local library or indeed have access to it in one way or another, I hope that you can um, get to dive into that and read more into it. But of course too, we'll talk about that as well with Deborah since she's here with us. But that is the end of our story for today, friends. Thank you so much for joining in story time. Absolutely appreciate you being here with us. And of course, enjoying this story. I enjoyed it. I hope that you did too. Thank you for being here. I'll catch you on the other side of this very short break. Thank you for being here with us on Storytime. And of course, we'll be welcoming our guest back to Storytime. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever wondered what makes you special? Maybe it's the color of your eyes. Maybe it's something that you can do, like sing. Well, with my brand new book, I See Me, you'll find out exactly what makes you awesomely special. Make sure you keep in touch with me on my social media handles and at Just In Time for Storytime. You're watching Storytime with Mr. Lamont. Indeed. Thank you, Justin Ford. If you've not checked out Just In Time for Storytime, please do and uh, follow him at Justin Writes for Kids on Instagram. Thank you so much for being here with us on Storytime. And please now join me in welcoming back to Storytime, our guest for today, Deborah Hopkinson. Thank you for being here. Welcome back. Oh, thank <laughs> you for reading my story. story. <laughs> Yo, thank you for writing it. I haven't heard anyone read it to me before, so it was a special treat for me. Oh, <laughs> I hope we did it justice because it's always um, a curiosity for me, as in, um, what voice do you have, or how do you how do how do you read it? Yeah, um, yeah, I um, I don't always do all the voices, so I thought you did a fabulous job. <laughs> um, I think my favorite character is Fred. And this is actually my first book with a talking animal. So oh. um, I usually write about history. So it was very fun. Um, but I always tell students and young readers and writers that writers, even when they've published books, make mistakes. And yeah. the very first draft of this book, which was several years before I sold it, was in the voice of the pumpkin. And my editor didn't like that. So I went back and tried it again, which is what we have to do as as all kinds of writers. Yeah. And it's amazing, too, that even after writing so long, you still have to go back and do edits and still get advice and feedback on stuff. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, I usually will revise, like, this picture book, Cinderella and a Mouse Called Fred, probably... Mm -hmm six or seven times with my editor wow. plus lots of times by myself right right oh well let's check to see too who we have as well i know thank you to everybody that is here with us this morning live and of course even if you're joining us later on for the recordings please be sure to leave any questions that you have for deborah any any questions that you have for us um here and we'll get back to them we'll try and get those answers for you uh but maypo is watching today too maypo is the cat one of the favorites here on Storytime. Thank you for joining in, Maple. We appreciate you. <laughs> Please don't eat Fred. <laughs> 
And then, of course, to Amanda, thank you for joining in. Sarah and Nathan in Coo and Dewey, Illinois. Today, we're checking in late, but in time to hear this wonderful story. I love stories that take a new twist on a known classic. Oh, yes, I love that, too. Thank you so much for joining in, and uh, good to see you here. And, of course, um, um, we hope that you're having a wonderful time uh, being back at school, but I'm glad that you could catch us today, too. And um, thank you again one more time, Megan and Ari, and you say we love it well yes indeed i love it too i'm with you on that and this is a fantastic story oh couldn't agree more but coming to you um back to you um deborah um you know um uh amanda and nathan and sarah here mentioned too that you know they love a story that takes a twist on a known classic how did that come about um you know, it just sort of happened that way, but I will say that I was also inspired by my cat named Beatrix. Um, and this book is actually dedicated to her. It says, dedicated with apologies to my cat Beatrix, who would never chase a mouse, or would she? <laughs> um, would and she another inspiration for this story was that I love to garden and I especially have been trying to grow pumpkins. And I wondered about the different names of hybrid pumpkins. And so I started to grow a fairy to hill pumpkin. And I found out that in the very first, some of the first um, tellings of Cinderella, which is a very old story, mm. um, artists used this French uh, heirloom variety, um, nicknamed a fairy tale pumpkin, to, as an inspiration for the coach. Um, in the story. So I have been trying to grow one. I grew um, only one with lots of vines and it's still not very big and it hasn't yeah. turned. It turns it's supposed to turn a, like a burnt orange and it's still very green. So oh. we'll see if Fred <laughs> the pumpkin survives. <laughs> yeah. And how long, what's the growing period? Like, oh, I started it in May and now it's September. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, so... I, I think I need to try a different place in my garden next time. <laughs> or maybe I need Fred the mouse to come and keep watch over it. <laughs> right, right. True, true. And uh, Maple promises not to eat Fred. So, yeah, we okay, have to do with that. <laughs> Thank you, Maple. Uh, he's watching red maple leaves fall through the window. Oh, I love that. This book makes me want to grow pumpkins next year. Oh, I love it. And so, um, you know, um, with the character of Fred or just, you know, like even just, I feel like even the Cinderella character are really funny. So did you set out to write, you know, like kind of like one that was humorous like that, or was it just, uh, or are you just naturally funny and then apply that to your writing? <laughs> I'm not very funny. Some of my books are about very serious topics. My other book this year is about uh, World War II in the Philippines. So mm. this was a, a departure for me. And I think it was because um, I guess uh, we have had rats in our garden. And uh, I decided that if you're going to have rats, then you kind of have to make a joke about it. So, um, <laughs> and I That's do have good. another another talking animal book coming out soon called Trim Set Sail. And it's yeah. historical fiction. Um, and it's about a real ship's cat. Um, but Trim is not quite as funny as Fred. I think Fred mm. is um, is funny. But also, I think Fred is funnier because of Paul Zielinski's amazing illustrations. So you really get to see him transformed from a mouse into a horse. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that is a big one. I love it. Um, and, uh, well, any, if, you know, like Fred, for me, Fred seems like such a hit right now. And I, I, I don't know about everybody else that is joining in. I know, and too, like, I, I'm, I'll be curious to see what the reaction will be as Fred gets more and more further and further out into the world. But just wonder, like, would you ever bring Fred into another book? Or Well, funny you should ask. <laughs> um, I have tried to write um, another Fred story. It was called uh, uh, Fred and the um, Cinderella and the Halloween Cat, and where um, uh, Fred tries to help them help the Ella and her wife out during the pumpkin season. Yeah. However, my editor 
as I always tell kids, you can't always write a good story the first time. Um, <laughs> she uh, didn't like it. So yeah. we may have to go back and see. <laughs> and see. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, no, lessons for all of us, for sure, that even after so many years and um, how many books down? You say 80th book now? Yes. Oh, 80, yeah. And what keeps you going? Um, well, again, as I when I go into schools or libraries, I always mm. remind readers that when we read and when we try to write about something, we always are learning. And one of the best things about, I think, um, being able to read and having access to books and the Internet is always being able to learn new things. So whenever I write, I learn. And that is exciting, whether you're a grandmother like me or you're just starting out. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, one of the things, too, that I want to ask you, you know, you mentioned a few times that you usually write about history, write about because even my, the first book that I how I was introduced to you was um, when Chronicle sent me um, uh, Follow the Moon Home. And so I just looked at it as a like, curious. And of course, I, you know, like started looking more into it. And then I had read about Felipe Costu's grandfather. Yes. And so I kind of knew that story. And so I was just a little bit more curious to find out who he was. And I was following him on Instagram and stuff and just trying to find out a little bit more. And of course, then started learning about your other works. But um, I just wonder, too, like, how do you come back? Because even that one had a theme, you know, there was that conservation theme to it. And uh, and it can be it can be a depressing topic if you think about it, where like there's so much work that needs to be done. Yes, there's work happening but we need to do so much more and seeing everything that's happening. So just wondering too, like, how do you recover from those books like that? Yes. Um, and I, I follow them in home. I uh, was based actually on um, my son's experience of going to Costa Rica to help sea turtles when he mm. was just in uh, middle school. Um, I, I feel as though um, it's it's important to study history and learn from it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also nice uh, when I'm reading myself, I do sometimes read um, like fun stories. Um, and I and I have a soft spot for romance and Cinderella. Adaptations. <laughs> My favorite Cinderella film is Ever After, yeah. which has Drew Barrymore in it. And because what I love about that particular version is that they do live on a farm um, and she she's in the apple orchard, she's harvesting. And because I love gardening, that I think also gave me the idea of wanting to bring in a Cinderella story that is about nature. Yeah. Um, I have a little golden book called Happy Earth Day, um, which um, is a very simple description of the, the origins of Earth Day, but it has things mm. like being able to grow carrots even on an apartment windowsill. Mm. So I think gardening can be something uh, wherever you live in the city or in the town or um, the countryside, um, you can try to grow even even one plant is, is, yeah, good. <laughs> is good. No, absolutely. No, it does. It, it really makes a difference. And um, yeah, I'm glad that, you know, we have so many plants out here too. just, uh, to try to fill our home with, with with lots of plants and and if they make me feel happy just seeing them and and depending on whether they're doing okay and they remind me hey we need water here <laughs> right <laughs> and it's a uh, it's something that i look forward to and um you know like just um feeling like i'm nurturing something yes. um, <laughs> but yeah so uh, the other thing too that i i was curious about was um you know, you've put out like right now, and we'll, please feel free to show us two of those books, but you're putting out five books at this time. How has that happened? And like, is this, is this, um, this is not normal. <laughs> like, uh, what is it? Supply chain issues? So, like, what is this? Well, so, you know, I think that you, you said you started your story time at the beginning of, uh, in the spring of 2020. Yeah. Um, and uh, for me, um, when I wasn't able to travel to schools or travel to research books, mm. um, I actually um, proposed some books. And yeah. actually, I sat down and really wrote a lot and hardly left my computer for yeah. several years. So yeah. the books that are coming out this year are partly a result of 
really two or three years that I that I didn't really do much, <laughs> didn't yeah. really do much else. Yeah. Um, so I, it just it's just a coincidence that, okay, that yeah. I have these books coming out. Well, that's amazing um, though. Five. How did how did you work? Did you work on them concurrently or were they finished one work with that? And I know finish is not there's no finish because right. you're kind of tweaking, but was there like a finish and then start or was it just all together? Well, so Cinderella was written before the pandemic. And, um, you know, if any of your uh, listeners like to draw, you know that um, once um, the author finishes the book, then an editor chooses an illustrator and the illustrator might have another book ahead of time. So it can take several years for an illustrator to finish all the artwork for a book. So I think this book took about three years from start to finish. Um, if it's um, a book where there aren't any illustrations, like this book, The Plot to Kill a Queen, is a longer book, middle grade historical fiction, and that comes out um, October 17th. Um, I wrote that mostly by myself, so it took like a year. So I wrote that last year at this time, I was just finishing it. So it takes about a year from the time you finish it until it comes out. Mm. And then if you have a book that has shorter chapters, but lots of illustrations like uh, Trim, Set Sail, um, this one, again, um, I wrote, uh, there's four of them coming out. The first two come out in October. Mm. Let's see, make sure I get this right. Um, <laughs> and, and um Christy Caldwell, the amazing illustrator, um, worked on these uh, during the pandemic. So um, it takes um, a lot of work from a lot of people to make a book. But I really love that um, some of your listeners are writing their own books. And <laughs> yeah. I encourage them to keep that work, keep it in a little bin of all mm. your favorite drawings. And someday you look back on it. Yeah. No, we had uh, we also had um, Daria Peoples who's illustrated many books and written many books too. And um, uh, she shared some of her writings from like kindergarten or first grade. And it was so cool to see like even at that point what she was creating and to the creator that she is now. So yeah, appreciate that. But um, then the other thing too, I was thinking with your books that you've written, you know, the five that are coming uh, out of the pandemic, um, versus the ones before that or ones that maybe you'll be writing now. Are there differences? Would you say, uh, it, are, are the pandemic ones maybe with more introspection or more reflection versus the other ones? Or what, how would you, um, what would be um, the differences that you could put your fingers on? I, th I think um, the book that I haven't talked about is for older readers. It's called Race Against Death the greatest POW rescue of World War II. Mm -hmm. And it is about um, the invasion of the Philippines in World War II and, uh, and prisoners um, and the Bataan Death March. So I think what during the pandemic writing that book, um, it's very emotional to mm -hmm. live and experience um, uh, difficult times. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Uh, writing, doing things for yourself, like taking a walk, or if you can go out into a garden, or um, even just playing if you have a pet, um, and reading something light. So I think I wanted to write more fun books after really absorbing myself in that, because yeah. yes, you're right, when when you don't, when it's just you and uh, the research that you're doing, it can be, it can be a little overwhelming. Yeah. Oh, no, I appreciate that. And just, yeah, you know, thank you for this and all the books that you've put out and just the work that you've done, too, in sharing, whether it's the history, like you said, to learn from it or, you know, it's, um, you know, conservation work. But also just uh, wondering, too, um, where to from here? Because this, this is a lot of work. And then, like, where to from here? Uh, well, right now, um, I'm working on two books about World War II. One will come out next September. It's called They Saved the Stallions, and it's about the rescue of the beautiful uh, Lipizzaner stallions um, during World War II. And I think kids will like that. It's um, They're not that long. <clears throat> they're maybe 200 pages. And I'm starting one about the Battle of the Bulge now, which, again, is a, a difficult topic, but... Um, 
the theme of that one will be how even in the midst of conflict or difficult times, yeah. um, we have some beautiful art that came out of um, army artists, or I, some of your listeners might know Ashley Bryan, the late Ashley Bryan, who was an amazing artist and poet. And he wrote a memoir, which actually I happen to have right here, oh. um, called Infinite Hope. Oh, I don't um, know. He passed know away. Um, and, um, but this is, he never talked about it for many years, but he um, did sketches of his um, experiences of, as an African-American soldier um, in, in Europe in World War II. Yeah. So I'm hoping to do a little feature about Ashley within the book. Um, and I try to try to link up not just history, but to make it, um, to encourage young readers to create themselves and, mm. and, to, and learn about the past through their own families too. Yeah. And you mentioned, you know, you've mentioned interviewing family members, reading lots of books and, you know, um, even just in your work, like being able to, 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 to write and get, get that knowledge, learn from your research, which maybe helps the next thing. But, um, how did you decide on where to land? Like, oh, how did this, <laughs> I don't know, like I call it a fascination with history or like, uh, how did you end up landing in that? I My first stories that I tried to write were about talking animals, but I grew up in Lowell, Massachusetts, which is a historic town, the beginning of the first labor movement with the Lowell Mill Girls, young immigrants and farm girls who worked in mills. Mm -hmm. And so I was surrounded by history. And at the time, I don't think I really appreciated that. But as mm -hmm. I've gone back, um, I've just been fascinated by um, what it was like to live in different times and yeah. the struggles that people went through. Yeah. And so I also think that history is not just about learning and memorizing names mm -hmm. and famous battles or presidents, but the experiences of ordinary people and families. Right, right. Not true, true. And, and it's so amazing because um i recently had a conversation with a friend and we were talking about um and this was uh my friend had uh, left left uh, i'm from zambia originally and so left zambia when they were young pretty young i think maybe six or seven or maybe even younger if i remember correctly but and then i did not move from zambia until i was an adult and so our experiences and we were talking to a mutual friend and they had only heard about Zambia from my other friend. And so when I talked about it, they're like, oh, you talk about it so differently. So different and from what way. I've heard from this person. And so it was just uh, what you're saying there, like telling those stories, because everyone's perspective is so yes. interesting and different and needs to be heard. And I appreciate that. Let That's me just show you one more book, which is yeah. right over here, th because this just arrived yesterday. Oh, yes. And this one also comes out in October. It's called Small Places Close to Home. Yeah. And the it's the illustrator, Kate Gardner's first um, picture book. It's a children's declaration of rights. Wow. And so speaking about history, one of, and because I've written books about World War II, mm. I was fascinated that in that after World War II, the United Nations began and America's first delegate to the United Nations was Eleanor Roosevelt. And she is the one who helped to, um, to get forth the first Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And so this book is um, um, in celebration of the 75th anniversary of that declaration, which oh, happened wow. in 19, December 1948. And Small Places Close to Home is a quote from Eleanor Roosevelt who says, um, where after all do human rights begin in small places close to home? Oh, wow. So I'm hoping that students of various ages and teachers will use this book um, and practice writing their own declaration of, of rights. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. And I remember uh, with my first graders at the time, maybe second, no, there was second grade at the time. And we um, we had worked on what is just kind of talking about what is what what issues if you were to run and we, we, we it was. Yeah, the scenario was if you were running for office, what would you what would you change? What's your manifesto? Can you tell us? And it was just so powerful to see what they 
came up yes. with and it's just like some of the things where you're like wait you, you're eight how are you writing this <laughs> but yeah it was just so it, it gave me hope for the future for sure I one I should I will mention this I guess um one of the things I did not put in this book was mm. um uh the right to read um and I've since um realized that's uh, very important because um we all know that we're seeing more books um being being banned um yeah and and I've experienced that myself with uh Cinderella because um of the ending, which is not the traditional ending. Mm. So I think it's important for listeners to um, support their local libraries and um, to recognize that people have a right to read. To read, absolutely. Yeah, no, I I, uh, I appreciate that. And I think um, that ne- ca- cannot be stated enough. I guess. And, and it's, it's one of those things that at times I think we take for granted when we have access to libraries where we are and you don't realize how much people don't have access to things like that. And um, yeah, I just want to really um, emphasize and please, please visit your local libraries. They are there, they are resources and tell a friend about them. Tell your story about how you went to the library because that might, you know, like remind somebody else that they can go, you know, that it is accessible to everybody and it should be. Um, and we hope that it is. Um, yeah, and then somebody too uh, asked me at one point um, in Zambia, they're like, "How can we access all these books that you read?" And I was like, "It's it's it, it hit me in that moment as well." It's like, yes, there's so many, so much literature that we have here that will not get across the world that way. And just thinking, how do we how do we keep spreading the word and the important messages that you all are putting in these books? But um, yeah. before, yeah, sorry. I was going to say a friend of mine, Jane Kurtz, is part of a project called Ethiopia Reads, and Mm. they have been um, making books with local um, uh, artists and writers and then trying to distribute them. So um, Mm. it's possible to find some of those those projects, but it's something we should all support. Right, right, for sure. Oh, well, Deborah, you know, we could have you here forever (laughs) and just we haven't even gone really into like all the other books that we want to talk about and all the other you know your um creative process around each particular book but um just you know like just before we close to um uh where where can people find you and you know like um and we know that there's a lot to look forward to from you but yeah what's what's your your closing message to all of us i guess my closing message is just to keep reading and writing um and again, just like to be like a little um, a little butterfly in the world and uh, visit flower after flower because yeah. um, all oh. those books are like flowers that will nurture you. Oh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> I thank love you that. so like much it for having me. No, thank you for being here. I know that, you know, people have to make adjustments and so on to... To, to be here with us and um yeah don't take that for granted you know appreciate you and coming to talk to you know our audience the the young people that are here the older people too you know just um your inspiration your stories the laughter that we had today you know like it goes a long way and so hopefully too that people have been introduced to your work some more if they did not know it or if they knew it here's more work from deborah coming right up so thank you so much for being here with us on story time please remember too that um you can catch deborah at all these um find deborah on all these amazing platform well on all these platforms um uh, including well the website at deborahhopkinson.com and then of course twitter or now x you can find um deborah hopkinson and of course instagram at deborah underscore Hopkinson. So thank you so much for joining in. Please, please remember to um, ask for Deborah's books at your local library and get to enjoy them. Thank you so much for being here with us on Storytime. We appreciate you and we hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. But before we go, just a quick check. There we go. Um, Of course, thank you so much, Nathan, Sarah, and of course, Amanda, you say thank you for sharing today. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you for sharing your time with us. We appreciate you. And please, too, there we go. Um, 
check out the q a with the illustrator paul zelensky here at that um uh, go to that uh, um, link and you'll be able to um, find out more about the book. So thank you for sharing that. And of course, we do have the amazing talking about people to thank. Maybe Deborah, who who do you who do you have to do to appreciate today? Well, we must uh, mention our editor Ann Schwartz, who worked with Paul and myself, yeah. and she was actually the editor of my very first picture book. So we've been together a long time. Oh wow! And um, also, I want to thank uh, Hannah Boardman from uh, TVS Media and yeah. Tracy Ben Stratton for their support. Yeah, no, Hannah uh, pulling the strings in the in the in the background, doing all the magic. Thank you, thank you, and yes, all amazing people. It takes a village to you know bring things, celebrate beautiful things like this. And just, um, yeah, it takes teamwork. Thank you so much for being here with us on Storytime. Um, do not go away yet. Deborah will catch you on the other side uh, uh, very shortly. But um, thank you for being here with us on Storytime. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> That was Deborah Hopkinson joining us today on Storytime. I hope we, well, I learned so much. I hope that you learned something too. Thank you so much for joining in. Or at very least, I hope you just enjoyed the laughter that Fred and Cinderella brought to us today. Thank you so much for being here with us on Storytime. This has been Storytime on this beautiful Wednesday morning out here in Oakland. Beautiful Wednesday morning, beautiful Wednesday, uh, wherever you are. I hope that it's been wonderful to you. And um, please remember to check in on your loved ones. Check in. A phone call, a little hello can go a long way. Thank you so much for being here with us on Storytime. And of course, remember too that tomorrow we are back with another exciting story. And this one is called Dancing Hands. It's coming to us from Chronicle Books. And this one is a beautiful one. It's a story of friendship in Filipino sign language. So come on out and learn something with us tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining in. I'm excited for this one. Well, I'm always excited books, right? So I'm excited for this one. It is coming tomorrow. Please remember to join us. I hope that you can join us. This has been Storytime. Much love from me. Thank you for being here with us and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>